SEL is the Trojan horse districts are using to bring in gender education. Now, this is going to be a bit of a crash course on social emotional learning. I'm going to sometimes refer to it as SEL for short. And from what I understand, this idea started off as teachers helping students build emotional intelligence. If you've ever heard of emotional intelligence, you might know what that is. And basically, it involved teachers getting training and in tr um, transferring those principles to their students of how to lead conversations with students about character development, and respectful conflict resolution skills. These were kind of the some of the main tasks that flew under the banner of emotional intelligence and was kind of the, um, the thought behind the introduction of SEL um, several years ago. And I can see, you know, possibly some warrant for that, uh, depending on the framework that's being used as the moral backdrop for the student. So I already want to draw your attention to the reality that if you're going to teach a child conflict resolution skills or character development, there's an underlying assumption in there. There's a couple of underlying assumptions. One is that you as the parent, that you as the teacher and me as the parent agree on what character development virtues are good to instill in students. I'm not sure that's often talked about in explicit terms, but there's a tacit agreement or assumption that we agree on those things. There's at least one other agreement that we, that we agree on what respectful conf conflict resolution looks like. So even in that nascent version of emotional intelligence or social emotional learning, there were some embedded assumptions underneath it that I'm not sure that everyone spoke out about and and knew them and could name them and 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 all of that kind of thing, but um, they were there. And what it this has morphed into, what SEL has morphed into, to quote the um, education professor that I was mentioning earlier, she's a, an education professor at a major Christian university. She said in her email to me, SEL is the Trojan horse districts are using to bring in gender education. And so that's why I want to unpack this, because we at the Center for Biblical Unity, we comment on issues related to race, justice, and unity. This is mostly under the, the justice banner. This is what um, is being called justice. And it's full of a lot of pretty words that we want to get behind to understand the worldview and the definition behind these terms. So let's start to unpack this a bit more. So the first website that I'm going to take you to and show you is an advocacy site for SEL. So SEL, Fundamentals of SEL, and I've tried to blow this up for you a bit. Um, SEL can help all young people and adults thrive personally and academically, develop and maintain positive relationships, become lifelong learners, and contribute to a more caring, just world. We're going to scroll down a little bit here. We define social and emotional learning an integral part of education and human development. It is the process through which all young people and adults acquire and apply knowledge, skills, and attitudes to develop healthy identities, manage emotions, achieve personal and collective goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain supportive relationships, and make responsible and caring decisions. Now, I want to draw your attention to all of the values that are embedded in SEL. All of these very pretty words. It, it, it helps adults and, and children uh, apply knowledge, skills, attitudes to develop a healthy identity, manage their emotions, um, feel and show sympathy for others. 
these are all things that sound highly, highly desirable. Like who would be against teaching a child how to make responsible and caring decisions for themselves? Who would be against having a more just and caring world? Okay, but what I want you to notice is you have a definition in your mind for what these terms mean. There's a definition there. And the question is, is what is the assumption that you have about that definition? And is it shared with your school district? Is it shared with your child's teacher? You know what you mean by empathy. You know what you mean by making a responsible and caring decision. You know what you mean when it says that you want your child to contribute to a more just world. You know exactly what that means. The question is, is, is that value in the way that you are defining it, hopefully as a Christian, you're defining it in a very biblical way, is that a shared definition with the school? So this is <clears throat> at the outset what, what we need to know. I'm going to just very briefly show you some of the major beliefs. So if you see here, social and emotional learning, it's involves self-management, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, social awareness, self-awareness. Who would be against these things? They all sound so nice. And so there's classrooms, schools, families, and communities. So this sort of concentric circles working their way out. So notice how the value system is centered in the classroom. The classroom is now the place that will instill values in your children, and then it will work its way out into the schools, families, caregivers, and communities. So I think this, this diagram is very interesting to me. Um, it's not saying that they're gonna center the family's values or traditional values or religious values. They are going, the school is going to teach the child values and the school's values will now become the central focus for the child. And again, that was from the case L. So I'm guessing it stands for CA California SEL dot org website. That was the website that I was reading from. So that's just some some introductory thoughts about it but I want I want you to notice is that this is all flying under the banner of justice and that is why we wanted to comment on it and devote an entire family meeting to this because this is a key plank in the effort of our public education system toward educational equity this is what they see as being part of an effort to give everyone a fair start and fair access to education because they want to ease the child's comfort and create an environment that will be optimal for each child to learn. And these social emotional learning tools is part of that educational equity effort. And, and so, when you scroll down on that website on, on the casel.org website, you'll see that it says, this is all based on research. Well, that's supposed to let me know as a parent or a teacher, oh, it's based on research, so it must be good. It all sounds good. But how are you defining these terms? And what is the worldview behind the terms? <music>